The most respected proponent of equal rights in the history of the U.S., Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., had become de facto leader of black America. He modeled his civil disobedience policy on that of Gandhi, nonviolent meetings in the name of change. He was also the target of hatred. James Earl Ray was notable for being an all-around screw-up. His specialty was getting arrested. During a 1952 stick-up, he managed to drop his wallet, which led immediately to identification and imprisonment. After his release, he stole $120 from a supermarket in St. Louis, only to fall out of a getaway car and into the waiting arms of the police. He served time in Illinois, again in Miami, and managed to earn two terms in the Missouri State Prison. He managed to escape in 1967. On March 28, 1968, King led a demonstration in Memphis, Tennessee, but the march degenerated into a mob. Many in King's organization blamed this on agitators, strangers they called the invaders. King vowed to return the next week without violence. As before, he again planned to stay at a Holiday Inn. Local editorials taunted him for staying at a white-owned hotel, suggesting that it would be more of a statement to stay at the fine Motel Lorraine, owned by Negroes. Declassified documents later proved the editorial was reprinted word for word from an FBI press release. Before Dr. King's arrival, a black man identifying himself as an advanced security man switched reservations at the Lorraine to the second floor. Investigators later determined that the man was not from King's group. And unknown to King, his aide, Merrill McCulloch, was an FBI informant. J. Edgar Hoover was fixated on sex and communists, not in that order. Since King preached equality, Hoover figured him for a communist. The FBI had bugged King's hotels and recorded him having sex with a woman that was not his wife. Hoover then sent the tapes to King with an anonymous note suggesting he kill himself. Nothing in the life of James Earl Ray shows criminal sophistication, but his activities show either really good luck or a well-organized plan. Using the aliases Eric Starvo Galt and John Willard, Ray rented rooms in several locations, one of which was a rooming house 200 feet from the Lorraine Motel. That evening, as Dr. King talked with friends on the balcony, a 30 6 bullet pierced his neck, jaw, and spine. He was pronounced dead an hour later. An aide pointed to the rear of the boarding house. Several others followed suit and pointed in the same direction. Yet others heard shots come from shrubbery across from the motel. After the shot, Ray allegedly left his belongings in the room and calmly drove his white Mustang out of Memphis into Canada. Notified of the murder, J. Edgar Hoover gleefully told his subordinates, they got Zorro, they shot Zorro. While riots broke out across the U.S., Ray spent a month in Toronto buying a fake passport and receiving phone calls from unknown persons. He spent six days in London, flew to Lisbon for five days, then returned to London. As he boarded a flight at Heathrow Airport, Scotland Yard arrested him, extraditing him to the U.S. No one ever explained how a bungling small-timer evaded international dragnets, nor where Ray got the $25,000 he spent within those two months. Attorney Percy Foreman told Ray to plead guilty because any jury would convict him out of revenge or to prevent further national turmoil. Ray received a 99-year sentence. Months later, Ray recanted, saying Foreman betrayed him. Ray's bizarre story involved a gunrunner known only as Raoul, who paid Ray to rent rooms in Memphis and purchase a .30-06 Remington rifle, taking it to the boarding house the day of the shooting. Attempts to aim a rifle at the motel balcony from Ray's bathroom window showed the so-called shooting position to be awkward, if not impossible. FBI agent Donald Wilson later testified he found two slips of paper in Ray's Mustang both with the name Raoul on them and the figure 450,000. There were also phone numbers, one marked with the initial J, which turned out to be the Dallas Strip Joint owned by Jack Ruby, then in prison for killing Lee Oswald. 
Both men were connected to the shadowy gunrunner named Raul. Agent Wilson felt neither the Atlanta office nor the FBI headquarters wanted the truth. His suspicions were well-founded. In charge of the King investigation was Cartha Deloach, agent in charge of the FBI plot of subversion and blackmail against Dr. King when he was alive. The 1976 Congressional Committee on Assassinations concluded that King's murder was possibly the result of a conspiracy. Surviving a murder attempt in prison, James Ray died of liver and kidney disease in April 1998. A year earlier, King's youngest son, Dexter, asked Ray directly, Did you kill my father? Ray said no. King's widow Coretta and her son lobbied for a reopening of the case. But as far as the FBI was concerned, the case was closed.